one example using the Riemann sum method, then we introduce the shortcuts to calculate the double integrals as they did for integrals in elementary calculus. So take a look at this question. This question says, well, estimate. Remember that when we use the Riemann sum, it might not give us the exact value. That's why we use estimate. Estimate the volume of the solid that lies above square okay the square given to us is r equals to 0 2 cartesian product 0 2 and the, the way that we define this is this is the set of all x and y values such that x ranges between 0 and 2, and y ranges between 0 and 2. And below the elliptic paraboloid, elliptic paraboloid, which is given to us as z equals to, well, 16 minus x squared minus 2 y squared. Okay, perfect. And the question says, divide r into four equal squares. So this is the note that we have on this question. Divide r into four equal squares. Very good. It also says that choose the sample point to be the upper right corner and choose the sample points to be the upper right corner. Upper right. corner of each square, a lot of information are given to us. Okay, let's see what do we have here. First of all, you need to graph your square. This is the very first thing you should do. Let's graph this guy. And this is just a ceiling on top of it. The most important part is for your R. And the height is dependent on your Z. I have my x, y, and this is my x, this is my y, and then I have my 0 to 2, 0 to 2, and I have the square, which question says, hey, divide it up into four equal squares. So four equal squares. Here we go. Not very much equal, but that's okay. We get the big picture. So we're dividing R into four subsections. The very first subsection, let us call it R sub one and one representing this point. Then R sub two and one representing this point, and then R1 and 2 representing this point because the question says, hey, choose the sample points to be the upper right corner points. And this guy, R sub 2 and 2. What are we going to do on each of these subsections? We're going to calculate the integral, double integral, and add them together. So this is our goal. We are going to. Calculate the double sum on each R sub I J's and add them together. 
or mathematically, you are doing this. You say that, hey, we have the double sum of our function, xi, xj, and my j starts from one, goes to two, and i starts from one, goes to two, and this guy, delta a, which is equal to, very well. Let us start by plugging one. We get f of x1 and y1 multiplied by the area. Okay, each of these little areas. This guy gives us x1, y1, one and one. This pointer representing here. But let's just write this guy down here. Delta A plus. The next point, for example, you can use one and two, or you can use two and one. It doesn't matter. F of one and two, delta A plus F of two and one, delta A plus F of two and two, delta A. So we're going to get an approximation of what's going on, of the possible volume. So f of one and one, we need to plug that in here. We get 16 minus one minus two. And what is the area? So this is one, one times one gives you one plus. f of one and two, we get 16 minus one minus two times four, which is eight. Delta A is one plus f of two and one we get 16 minus x squared is four minus two times one plus f of two and two, we get 16 minus four minus eight. Okay, very good. So if we do the calculation here, we have 13 plus seven plus 10, And here you get four, this is 34, am I right? So it says the volume, the volume bounded by of the solid over R and below. Z equals to 16 minus X squared minus two Y squared is about 34. Approximately 34. Again, by using the Riemann sum method, you get an approximation of the volume. We're going to use shortcuts, present formulas, actually using what we learned in elementary calculus and do the calculation for each of the double integrals. Sometimes it represents a volume, some other times it's just the calculation and represents, for example, other contents related to physics, engineering, data science. It's not always the volume. 